So I thought that the thing that you said, you said journalists, they're not being journalists anymore. They're just campaigning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that? Yeah, yeah. Because we see that everywhere. I mean, yeah, it really does, right? And it used to be something that only a few of us who were obsessed with media or in the media could tell. And now everyone can see it. I mean, everyone who absorbs news now can see that. They can see that paper after paper and channel after channel is just not doing what they used to do. Yeah. And people smell it now. Uh, they're aware of it uh, in a way that they weren't even 10 years ago. Is that because, you know, to be a journalist, you have to say that kind of stuff? Or is it a mix of that? And then if you're the type of person that becomes a journalist, like if you want to be like an activist, they're like, oh, be a journalist now. Well, there's actually, there's, there's various explanations, but the best one is, is uh, I think Peter Thiel's, I think it was Peter who said it first, that um, uh, if you look at journalistic salaries, not not like the high polluting columnists who get super well paid, uh, or the sort of Rachel Maddows who get tens of millions a year, but the average journalist, the, uh, the, the, the salary has declined significantly. Uh, in recent decades. Oh, okay. And th there's lots of explanations for that, the, the demonetization of much of the media, just, uh, fall, out, fall off of print media. Um, but it means that uh, if salaries are lower, it means you get a certain type of person going into the profession. And that's one explanation for why there are very few working class people in journalism. There's probably days. a lot of professions that it's sort a, of kind of have that. Absolutely. And here's the thing that happens in journalism, which makes it kind of unique, which is that if you go into it and you're the kind of graduate who's got a whole pile of debt, particularly if you're in the UK, in the US, you need, if you're going to be badly paid and you're going to be living in a bed sit or a one bedroom somewhere in New York, something, you have to be paid in some other currency. And the other currency you'll be paid in is the respect and esteem of your peers. Oh, so like the professors in college. Right. So it's the same people then. So it were very, very similar Comedy class like of people. Uh, absolutely. There, there's lots of professions which have got this going on in them. But, but journalism is a sort of particularly weird one because um, y y you can see, I mean, in my own lifetime, journalists, journalists used to regard themselves as hacks. I mean, we used to use that in the UK, hacks. It, was, it didn't take ourselves too seriously. Oh. Um, now, now we have democracy dies in darkness. We are the last <laughs> line of defense. We're, we're practically like the firefighters, but braver. And we run into burning buildings all the time. And, you know, sure. so, and, and yeah, there's no, I mean, there's no profession that pats itself on the back more regularly. Advertising, maybe. Maybe they like, they like holding and there's a shows. sort of there's a sort of Venn diagram <laughs> yeah, yeah, of, yeah. of those two as well. So I think that's kind of one of the explanations, and they uh, they go into it because they think that they're they're they, they're going to be. They all think they're going to be. Um, uh, uh, they're going to break a Watergate like scandal. That's the other oh. thing. Ever since Watergate, um, all journalists seem to think that everything is Watergate, and you can tell that by <laughs> right. the fact every time there's a political scandal, it has Gate stuck after it. You know, I, I I always hoped it would stop some years ago when there was a scandal in the UK about a politician breaking through a gate, and I wanted them to call it Gate Gate, and then <laughs> stop, stop with the gate stuff. <laughs> Very tedious. Sure, it kind of does remind me. Like, it, it's always you know similar, but I always bring it back to comedy. But it was if you look at what comedy was too, it's the same sort of thing where you'd think of it as like. A low profession. You're like, I'm talking yeah. about sex and nightclub. So a lot of times when you look back at some of the most, you know, revered people, they what they're remembered for is their, you know, political statement. They go, this guy was a, you know, philosopher of the time. He said this, and you mm. go, most of the time he was, you know, talking about sex in a nightclub. Yeah, absolutely. So it's almost like the one little part of the what that the 99 percent of what they were actually doing wasn't that. Well, I mean, I was joking earlier about journalism pretending it's a dangerous profession. Comedy actually has become a dangerous profession, of course. <laughs> bad actually, boys over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah very, has, very bad boy. Has become, <laughs> yeah. Well, because uh, com comedians try stuff out and say things that everyone knows to be true. And uh, this is uh, not a very propitious time to do that.